Thank you. Thank you, Ahmad. I, I've been surrounded by H. Uh, Hamad, Hamada, Human, Halim, but uh, 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 welcome everyone. I'm really excited, looking forward to this debate. And uh, this will give you guys a very good idea how difficult or easy or fun it was planning this conference. So without any further ado, I will have, so one thing, uh, so t they each would have 15 minutes for their uh, um, starting remarks, then five minutes for Roberto, and then 10 minutes for closing remarks. So I will have Human uh, start the debate. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah, wa Salatu wa Salamu ala Malla Nabiya Bada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to this. Uh, you know, long awaited, at least on my end and Hamada, we've been uh, trash talking or each other for the past couple of months uh, around this debate. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, so we're, 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 we're getting ready to uh, kick off, inshallah. Uh, so I might start with uh, simply saying that as a prefect, uh, as, a, as, a, as a sort of a beginning introduction, that the question of is Islamic psychology ready for clinical practice, I think it might be answered in a very short way. And that is that Hamada himself has invited me to teach at the Hartford Seminary, which is how I originally got to uh, really get an opportunity to be mentored with him, uh, to teach the methods uh, that I'm actually practicing in clinical practice. So uh, perhaps suffice to say that Hamada on some level has some cognitive dissonance and he believes that, uh, that, 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 that we're pretty much ready for clinical practice. Uh, but let's, you know, kind of humor Hamada for a little while for, this, uh, uh, for the purposes of this, um, uh, you know, uh, debate. And let's also um, uh, say that you know, we have been co-chairs on this committee uh, for the past couple of months, and maybe this is our cathartic way of being able to get out some of our tensions, uh, actually, as well. So let's see uh, where it takes us. Um, but, you know, truth be told, all joking aside, we have great love and respect for each other. Uh, at least I can speak for myself in that regard. <laughs> maybe uh, Hamada might be able to speak for himself. but. Uh, but the, the, the reality is that Hamada, I see him as a mentor, as a senior to me. Um, uh, he's really kind of uh, helped shape a lot of my uh, thinking and, and clinical practice and, and work. And he's held me accountable a lot. And he's been very critical of my work in, in a very, in a, a lot, which has been for me a very growth promoting uh, opportunity. So, um, you know, I'm uh, maybe this is self-esteem preservation uh, uh, that I'm the junior, admitting jun uh, uh, that, that I'm junior here, and, uh, and and secondly to say that you know uh, whatever critique he's uh, ready to offer, I'm willing to uh, think critically about, inshallah, and, and and hopefully be prepared to make me better uh, for the future. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so by the way, I don't know if that counts in my 15 minutes. That was just kind of like- It does. Oh, it does. Wow, okay. <laughs> yes, see, see, this is also the push and pull between myself and uh, Hamada because um, he's very, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, as a psychologist, I'm a little bit more process oriented, more flexible. Hamada's, uh, you know, medical model, standardized, uh, you know, measures, uh, you know, keep things uh, uh, exact protocol and, 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 and manualized. Um, so, okay, let's, let's, let's kind of uh, jump into a couple of points that I have to say. Uh, first off, let's take a look at this. Uh, uh, you know, when we ask the question of, uh, is Islamic psychology ready for clinical practice? The question is, according to whom? If, uh, the que if the answer is current practice or the common consensus among clinicians or academics or the psychological community, let's say, then the answer is easy because any philosophy or, 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 or promising explanatory model that describes the human psyche, pathology, health, and its treatment is deemed acceptable within the quote unquote expert community. And if we go with that standard, then the answer is simple. It's yes, because if we had, can include narrative psychotherapy, existential psychotherapy, psychodynamic psychotherapies, which have very little um, uh, kind of outcome studies or RCTs, uh, then, um, then who's to say that Islamic psychology uh, is any inferior to any of these 
uh, notions and that, that it should be held behind. But if we say, okay, then it's according to the medical model and, uh, and they're the gatekeepers of what's deemed acceptable within the scientific community. And uh, they're the ones that kind of bear the arms. And here's sort of a, a comical uh, image that I've produced of Hamada holding a, holding a weapon, right? And, and not <laughs> really letting anybody who's not got any RCTs behind them to, uh, to, to in through. Um, then the question is, uh, you know, we're evaluating ourselves by the medical model. And, uh, and, and we determined that RCTs are the only standard in which uh, we can kind of get into the club and it's acceptable to be, um, uh, to, 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 to practice psychology. Now, uh, but let's go with that for a little while. Let's humor uh, Hamada and he's got kind of a, a, a pose here, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like, like bring it on, right, you know? <laughs> And this is, uh, by the way, you can you notice that his uh, goatee here is a little bit uh, blacker than it is today. So perhaps some of our stressful conversations have given him some white hair over the years. Um, but let's let's say let's go with this sort of evidence-based, right? Evidence-based uh, kind of um, idea and notions, and humor this and entertain this for a little while. And if that's the case, let's, my answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, for, for, for a couple of reasons, and I'll, I'll try to go through them uh, rather quickly. Um, one of them because, um, you know, Hamada's got a uh, public health uh, uh, hat, right, that he wears, um, and underneath it, he's lost all his hair, right? <laughs> and uh, I, too, am losing my hair, by the way, but I choose to keep my hat, hat on my head. Um, but uh, from a public health uh, lens, right, um, we think we talk about behavioral health care disparities, right, and help seeking behaviors. And we know that there is a huge demand for mental health services and huge numbers of people that are suffering. And when we have these sorts of big numbers uh, that are suffering, then we need to uh, step it up and expedite and uh, come up with a, uh, you know, cautiously optimistic, right, as Fauci says around the COVID vaccine development, right, uh, approach to um, expedite and to try to come uh, uh, bring something to the table. And uh, what we're finding is that Muslims are unlikely, um, you know, faithful Muslims, those that are more religiously observant, are more likely to seek out imams, for example, so it's not necessarily an ideal model right, where we have imams who are not trained in mental health to deliver mental health services, or they may be largely absent and or psychologically traumatized by culturally insensitive uh, psychotherapies, or at best culturally sensitive psychotherapies that may not necessarily take into consideration um, their faith and their background, okay? So our patients, and you know, Khalil Center has developed uh, for a little while now, and we show that certainly this is the case and the proliferation and the expansion of Khalil Center rather rapidly in the past 10 years is just evidence for that, that Muslims are kind of craving and uh, you know, culture, Islamically oriented psychotherapy. Okay. And then the other reason why is because Harold said so. I mean, the, the, the thing is, you know, Dr. Koenig was on the uh, IP track a little bit earlier and um, and if we take a look at some of the evidence that's uh, uh, being produced uh, and, and developed, there's certainly some promising indications for spiritually oriented psychotherapies. Um, at, 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 at least we can say that there's sufficient evidence on depression and anxiety that using a spiritually oriented or integrated psychotherapies are uh, effective, are evidence-based. Uh, in fact, Koenig demonstrates through an RCT uh, that holds for 12 weeks and then three months after, 12 weeks of intervention, that for anxiety and depression, at least the modification of CBT is at least as good um, and sometimes better for more religiously oriented uh, patients uh, to integrate spirituality. Now, um, I recognize that there's limited data for an exclusively spiritually oriented psychotherapy 
across different kinds of, you know, without a modification of standardized protocols like CBT, like manualized, like the manualized, uh, you know, kind of um, intervention strategies that are out there. Um, but we can at least say that there's preliminary evidence, right, for spiritually integrated or, or exclusively spiritually oriented psychotherapies uh, that are outperforming control groups or at least equivalent to alternative treatment and gains are maintained. Now the data set admittedly is small, okay? We will, I will definitely acknowledge that, but it should not be discounted because many CBT didn't start that way. Many th theories show promising results, and then they go into phase two and phase three trials, just like the vaccines, right? We, you know, we start to pump in money and support and, uh, and, and to see where we can take it. Now, despite the fact that RCT isn't there, let's just pause for a moment and look at the fact, look at what types of evidence does exist for um, spiritual concepts, right? So cognitive restructuring works according to CBT, right? Outcome RCTs show this. The integration of faith and religion as a positive religious coping and protective variable against psychological distress is well established in the literature. Meaning making is an integral part of mediating psychological distress. CBT operates on the very assumption of changing human belief. Uh, the therapeutic relationship is an integral part of psychotherapy, so we show that therapist matching is really important in enhancing psychotherapy. So when we have spiritual values matching up with spiritual orientation within the interpretive framework and meaning-making lens, we show that we have a pretty strong case for, for spiritually integrated psychotherapy. Um, Seligman and his work in positive psychology is showing immense data to support the notion of optimism and its relationship to, um, uh, to psychological well-being. Looking at gratitude research, looking at forgiveness and the psychological benefits of forgiveness, looking at the relationship between, the negative relationship between materialism and, uh, um, and distress, rather, sorry, the positive relationship. The increase in materialism increases distress. And we can say that in a spiritual psychology, we are trying to uh, get immaterial and more metaphysical. Looking at giving back, generativity is proven to be um, uh, associated with psychological well being. Looking at religious engagement on a communal level and more involvement with religious communities demonstrates protective um, variables and, and uh, a salutary uh, benefits to psychological health. So now what are we saying? I mean, let me add this. I mean, the neurobiology of, me of mystical experiences have also been shown. That there's the activation of certain uh, uh, parts of the brain that reduces activity in the amygdala and the limbic system that we know is associated with distress. Uh, a more activation of the amygdala is associated with distress. Um, we've shown that spiritual techniques and psychotherapy can have empirically demonstrated effects on brain functioning. Um, similar or more powerful than even psychotropic medications, right? Long-term meditation uh, de demonstrates uh, uh, changes in the brain and a responsiveness to resistant depression, in fact. Uh, so uh, we are saying that there is significant evidence. And now when we say a TIIP, so I take a TIIP, traditional somically integrated psychotherapeutic approach. What is TIIP? We can say there are two components, let's say. Number one, it's we are taking uh, interventions that work, that are proven to work, right? Like all of the things that I mentioned, and what we are doing is adapting it for the Muslim population, adapting it and providing it within the spiritual framework of our patients. And that is, so we can say it's proven to work, we're using it. Okay, it's putting flavor on the medication, so to speak, right? And utilizing it within the spiritual, within the spiritual faith traditions and adapting it and giving it to our patients. The other thing, and of course, you know, how do you define a theory? Uh, a theory is not necessarily the tools. Again, it, we're humoring the, 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 the empirical uh, evidence uh, base argument because 
I would argue that, you know, these are tools and we need a broader, more metaphysical explanatory framework, but we'll put that aside for a moment, anticipating that Hamad is, uh, you know, not necessarily interested in things that we can't demonstrate through the data, uh, potentially. Uh, so let's say data driven. Oman, just a reminder, you have one more minute to go. Okay, okay, no problem, inshallah. Um, and so we're gonna stay close to the data, utilize the data in the TIIP, but the other piece is that we are going to use exploratory Islamic interventions that I would argue are effective on the spirit at the very least. But let's put that aside for a moment to come back to the data argument, right? But it may have promising value as demonstrated in the psychological therapeutic um, uh, kind of laboratory, so to speak. And what we are saying is that it may have promising value. We may not necessarily fully be there, right? But it's certainly aspirational. And I acknowledge before Hamada even needs to say the words that there's limitations and that we are getting there. And through even his own critique, we are taking that feedback, trying to go back to the uh, drawing board and trying to see if it works. Now we show through our data that People come, come into Khalil Center with clinically significant scores on the BSI, and their latest assessments are subclinical. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Hamad, I have to cut you off here. Okay, give me 10 seconds. Okay, 10, ten seconds. Okay, go ahead. And uh, give him extra 10 seconds. <laughs> that's fine. Give, you can give Just it to ten. Hamad as well. <laughs> and, and so now we have a one year data set, which Hamad is familiar with, with over 400 sessions and 107 patients. And yes, he's going to say that there's no control groups or comparison groups, but I acknowledge it and I can frame it as a pilot study and we're getting there and we're starting the process. And so now I hand it off to Hamada to uh, tear up uh, my arguments that I've laid in front of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. At this, I'm, I'm almost convinced. <laughs> okay, Hamada. It's too... بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربي اشرح صدري ويسر لي أمري واحذر عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قومي I'll make sure my dua is longer than Humans for this debate <laughs> okay so السلام عليكم ورحمة الله um, first of all I want to kind of also offer some context to this debate we did this debate for a couple of reasons one is to keep it fresh and this is my our first time doing a debate and we want to do something different um, and uh, make things more interesting. And so, you know, Oman, as she said, I agree, we are, we are uh, close friends and we, we just because we love. Uh, the other reason to do the debate is to uh, keep the standards. You know, this is a discourse and we wanna make sure the, the discourse, we're, we're raising discourse and keeping our, ourselves honest in terms of the science and the work that we're doing. Uh, and the third reason is that, you know, this is something, I know this is Haman's life work and I'm going to poke holes in it and undermine it. And I think we have to have a space where we feel comfortable um, kind of discussing and, and arguing and sometimes of what's the best model. And we want to kind of model that of how we can have healthy arguments and discussions about things that are very important to us. Uh, so without further ado, here is my argument, my opening uh, statement. So here's the outline. My argument is very simple. I'm gonna keep it very simple. Here's what I'm arguing. That to have, to be ready for clinical practice, you have to have level one evidence. In other words, in other words we have to show empirically that uh, what we're doing is efficacious, it's, it works, that is proven to work, and that um, it's safe, that it's not gonna make things worse for the person. And so we have to have that standard with any intervention we offer. Uh, and uh, that's important for anything we do to, with our clients. And to, or in order to um, establish level one evidence is, 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 has been met, we have to have multiple randomized controlled trials. And Human knows that, and that's why he uh, kind of is trying to undermine that. But we know that to have level one evidence in any intervention, that we have to have randomized controlled trials. And I wanna argue, I think Humana has already argued for me that Islamic psychology doesn't have level one evidence yet. What I'm not arguing is that Islamic psychology is not effective. I, I think it's very, very um, possible, in fact, probable that it's very effective. Uh, maybe it's even more effective than other interventions, 
But what I am arguing is that that has not been shown yet. That has not been proven yet. And I'm not arguing that Islamic psychology does not help people. Because again, uh, it could very well help a lot of people. And inshallah, in Khalil Center and, and others who are providing this, this service, hopefully they are helping people. But again, we're not at the place where we can say this is ready to be scaled up as a clinical practice. And that I'm not arguing that Muslims do not need culturally appropriate care. Of course they need culturally appropriate care. But we do need to be responsible and, and have uh, the, the, keep the bar high and make sure that what we're doing meets standards uh, according to science. And so just to review for people, when, how, how do we know that intervention works and how is it safe? Well, we don't just ask Harold if it works or not. Okay, it's not, that's the lowest level of expert of uh, evidence, is expert opinion. Uh, case series and case reports or, or even observational studies where we're looking at process metrics is also a lower level. Really, sorry, really to establish level one evidence, you have to have not just one, but multiple controlled trials uh, that, have, that are specific to the intervention and specific to the conditions that you're treating. Now, um, in terms of the pipeline and how that looks in terms of proving a, a intervention works, it always starts with some small proof of concept studies in which you're developing your method, you're developing your intervention, you're formalizing it, you're making sure all the, the people who are using it are doing the same thing. And then you're tweaking it, you're, you're adjusting it, you're, you're changing it so, that it, so it can be better and better. And then after you, you've, you've done a couple of these studies, you move on to case series and maybe case controls. Case control, you have a control group, you have a group that have not been exposed to the intervention, and control, if you see, is there a difference between those who got exposed to intervention and who are not? And this is what I'd argue, this is where we are. We're in between these two areas when it comes to Islamic psychology. And we're far from uh, randomized control trials. You know, inshallah, I hope maybe another five or 10 years, Human will come back and show the clinical trials. And then we'll, we'll talk about the methods and the outcomes at that time. Now, of course, it's easy to you know, undermine me and say, get off your ivory tower, medical doctor, you know, you know, what, what you just want to throw pills at the problem. Well, don't believe me, believe American Psychological Association. American Psychological Association, your own discipline, has the highest standards. Actually, they were decades ahead of the medical establishment in terms of establishing standards for quantitative methods. And so they have, they've esta have established guidelines of what is considered good evidence for good and best practices. And, among, and, and within those guidelines, it's the, tip, it's the methods we've all learned in graduate school. Let's make sure we have good construct validity in our, in, in our intervention. In other words, is our intervention actually helping? And how do we know that it's the intervention that's helping? Maybe it's the therapist. You know, we know that from the, from the science, from the empirical studies, we know that there's plenty of evidence that independent of the therapeutic modality, that the therapeutic alliance with the therapist drives the, 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 the outcomes even more than the, the therapeutic modality. So maybe it's not that uh, the method, the theory and the method is working, but maybe people just like Human, and if, whether Human does CBT or psychodynamic therapy, it's the therapist that, um, that is driving the outcomes. But it's important to know. Otherwise, what's the point of getting all this training and, and, and getting master's degrees and PhDs in a method if it's really the therapist? It's more important to, it's perhaps more important in some cases just to make sure the therapist establishes alliance. But you don't know that unless you have the right study design. It might be with time, maybe with time when people just get better. And again, you have to show that with a randomized controlled trial. That's the experimental model that shows, that establishes construct validity. Threats to construct validity is confounders. So again, if, if you, in, in the Islamic psych psychotherapy, you're also doing CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, which one is actually working? Which one is actually helping the outcomes? Maybe it's the CBT that's helping the outcomes. Maybe um, it's something else that's helping the outcomes. Maybe uh, something else in their life is, is, is helping the outcomes. Uh, for instance, um, Many outcomes are actually going down these, these days because of corona and, um, and uh, some of the pressures that we're having politically and socially. And so if we didn't have control groups compare and watch people, two groups over time, we'd be uh, misled by the outcomes. 
external validity. Is the um, intervention applicable to different groups? And, and not just uh, different groups, in, in our case, Muslims, but even different cultures. Are different people receptive to the same um, intervention? So how generalizable is, is it across cultures? Now, I think for the most part, most of the discussion, um, Islamic psychology has been used as a transdiagnostic intervention. In other words, for different types of conditions, but it's something that needs to be looked at. Does it work for anxiety the way it would work for depression, the way it would work for um, other conditions? That needs to be shown empirically. And then this is an important thing. Are the therapists doing the same thing? So if you have a study, uh, including Human's, the, the work that Human is doing, are they all doing the same thing? If, is, is the way people are talking about forgiveness it, uh, with one client the same way a, uh, a therapist is talking about forgiveness with another client? What, how is that being accounted for? And I think uh, Human jokes about manualization, but I think that's the way to standardize things and make sure what you're doing is consistent. So again, the, to establish um, clinical guidelines and to, uh, something is a practice, you have to have level A. And again, this is the American Psychological Association standards. It's also the medical standard, but you know, this is the standard. You have to be level one evidence to say that this is ready for clinical practice, that it's safe and efficacious. You have to have multiple randomized controlled trials and everything else does not meet the cut for that. So I will cede my time to Human and I will, because I'm more, more concise and to the point and uh, we can move on. <laughs> So here's the thing, Oman. Is absence of evidence evidence of absence? So here's your Roberto. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, you know, we Hamada and I have uh, uh, both, I think, agreed uh, between both of our presentations that um, lack of evidence does not mean no evidence. Uh, it means that um, we need to investigate more, right? And we need to look at look more. Now, uh, I'll address one point real, qu uh, real quick. Uh, I, you know, when I meant to say Harold Koenig, ask Harold, I was not referring to his expert testimony, but in fact, his randomized control studies, right, that does demonstrate level one, uh, uh, you know, criteria, meet that criteria for readiness for clinical practice, at least on depression, anxiety with Muslim patients utilizing CBT. Now, obviously, Hamada could, uh, you know, uh, uh, poo poo that very easily by saying that it's a C it's CBT and you're ultimately doing a cultural adaptation, um, but that's part of my point is that uh, is is that I'm acknowledging that we are utilizing evidence based um, protocols right that uh, uh, that have been proven to work at very at the very least with our patients in an integrative uh, capacity. Number two that spiritually integrated psychotherapy also has been demonstrated to have RCTs. However, the data is too small and I don't think it meets the criteria of generalizability yet. And that's a weakness and that's, a, that's an acknowledgement, but it shows promising results that are maintained with low levels of patients, right? Low numbers in a generalist non-denominational approach, okay? So what I'm saying is that take these two combined add on to it all of the different various facets of psychotherapy that we know as clinicians we get trained in. The consolidation of the therapeutic alliance, forgiveness, gratitude, optimism, all these things that are so central to a psychological, to a spiritually oriented approach are salient ingredients and features and demonstrated proven interventions that are weaved in in an integrative fashion. Now, is the sum, uh, you know, recipe that's put together, uh, you know, uh, uh, the protocol manualized? Um, no. And that's also a question. And I, and I want to, uh, you know, uh, let me just share my slide for a moment here. Um, there is, uh, and and I'm not necessarily making this argument, but I'm humoring. Let's 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 humor this for a moment. That. Um, you know, are we bound to RCTs? I think we have to uh, look at the fact that postmodernist theories, psychology is very broad. And you said APA sets a standard. 
Yes, it does, but there's also great diversity in APA. For example, APA also uh, you know, had a hand in the torture uh, of Muslims through military psychology, right? And there was a consensus or there was agreement, our association did something that we didn't agree with. And we were all members of that, that we did Toba from it like years afterwards, right? But, uh, but the field of psychology has great epistemic diversity. And I think we really need to think about this. We'd have to throw out all of po po a lot of psychology if that's what we're gonna use as a sole standard. Now, even if we consider RCTs, let's take a look at the question of construct validity. This is a huge problem, and Hamada has to admit to this in psychology, and the medical model always questions whether psychology fits within the social sciences or within the hard sciences or within the sciences at all. And when we look at the uh, uh, look at depression anxiety down here, inter-rater reliability is not even a moderate uh, uh, you know, effect that we're finding from clinicians to clinicians, we're having different conceptions of the very same, same, same diagnosis. So we have to admit that psychology itself does not carry the same type of effect. Uh, and we're dealing with, I'm arguing, that we're dealing with more than biology. The more biological we get, the easier to measure, the easier to have linear designs, and not to mention manualized uh, um, interventions are limiting. People question that, those who are process outcome. They say what? They say, we are clinicians and, and, and maybe Hamada's uh, largely researcher heavy light on clinicians, clinical practice, right? I'm clinical practice light on uh, clinical trials. And I know that the vast majority of CBT people that I know do not practice manualized CBT. They weave in all sorts of things. And that's the critique. The critique is that it's not generalizable to real life practice. So they say this RCT may be um, limiting or it may not be useful, uh, as useful as we want. Certainly APA says it's a gold standard. Let's take a look at the APA report. The APA report does not say as a correction that it's the only standard for clinical practice. Rather, it says that it's the gold standard for clinical practice. It's very important nuance here. And we look at the empirical evidence practice that is admissible according to the APA report. We have things like process outcome studies, naturalistic studies, case studies, um, uh, qualitative studies. And when we widen the pool of data, outside of RCT, I think the case becomes almost closed for the fact that an Islamic psychology certainly can exist and it needs to continue to demonstrate further um, evidence. Let's take a look at mindfulness. How did mindfulness scale up really quickly? Same phenomenon. We started soft, we introduced Buddhism, we demonstrated some effects and now here we are. And Islamic psychology, I think, has much more promising potential given the richness of the Islamic intellectual heritage. The last point I'll make is let's pause for a moment. We're Muslims here at the end of the day, right? Muslims, a mental health conference. So our Islam shapes our epistemology. That means that we are, that, that true knowledge is also from the spiritual. So if the Prophet وسلم, said, you know, use this dua, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And you will not be harmed by anything. When the Quran says it's shifa, right? Uh, when we are saying that, say this dua, Alhamdulillah, that you will not go through the same trial that you've witnessed somebody else go through. There is no way you can measure that. It's beyond measure. It's beyond RCT. However, as Muslims in an Islamic psychology, we give assent to the fact that we do believe that scripture that is proven and established has benefit. And that's a true source of knowledge. And so we are not saying, you can take a look at spiritual therapies and say, spiritual therapy is only effective. Why? Because you can be an atheist. You don't even need to believe in the soul, right? The bottom one, you say, despite not positively affirming the soul, give me 30 seconds, this is my last point that I'm finishing with. 
because there are spiritual therapies. Spiritual therapies are simply cognitive emotional therapies that we can have mechanisms for change that's measurable, okay? And you can be an atheist and show that data and you have to accept it as a scientist. The other approach is to say that because they affect the soul and that there's also salutary effects that we can demonstrate psychologically, but at very minimum, we also believe that it has positive effects on the spirit. Of course, there's got to be training in that and best practices because people may actually do harm, and I agree with that. And so that's the part that we say definitely is ready for practice. Finally, the no part is I acknowledge the limitations in data, but we have promising potential, and, that, and that's where I sort of rest my case. Okay, so limiting, uh, so lack of uh, data and limited scope. Um, so here's your Roberto Hamada. Okay, so there's one clarification. Um, you said you rest your case. Are you ceding your time for closing arguments? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> good, good try. Okay, that I, also good see, try. <laughs> I also see that people are getting excited on the chat. I, I'm looking at you, Dr. Kerry York. But I, so I'll take both of you guys on, no problem. <laughs> okay, so, and, and again, and in and, and, and all seriousness, we purposely kept this short, so the, or relatively short, we're trying to keep it relatively short, so we can open up for discussion with the, with the group. So uh, I'm ready for you, Carrie. Um, so in terms of your, the, the, let me put my, I'll put my slides in a second for the rebuttal. But in terms of RCDs, so I think we're confusing a couple of things. Number one is you can see that it's a gold standard. So we want to keep our interventions at the highest level. And that is the highest level of, of proving something is working and was safe. It's an experimental model. All those other methodologies, whether it's narrative methods or qualitative methods or mixed methods, is to learn more about the intervention and learn more about our situation. It's not to establish clinical practice. Now, um, I, I look at psychology and mental health in general as a science, uh, as an empirical science. And when we find something doesn't work or quite frankly is dangerous, we leave it alone. Now there's a danger. And this is why I always include efficacy and safety. There's a danger. I mean, that's fine. We have different sources, uh, epistemological sources of information, empirical, uh, wahi, revelation, and rational. But what gets dangerous if somebody says, and you appeal to authority, this Islam says this, Islam says that, and this is what I'm going to prescribe you this, and read these surahs, and 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 drink this, and you know what you don't know what's happening, and and if you don't show it works or doesn't sh work, you are you are at risk of of endangering the person that you're trying to take care of. Okay, so let me go to my rebuttal slides. Okay, so um, not reasons for justifying um, Islamic psych psychology for clinical practice. Muslims want it. Just because Muslims want it doesn't mean that it's ready for, for, for um, clinical practice, that we're already doing it. I mean, so there's a, there's a whole set of ethical issues with um, doing something that's still being worked out. And so you can kind of sprinkle it in or integrate it, or if you're trying to formalize or prove it's working, you can get an IRB and test it and test people who are given uh, standard care versus uh, the experimental scare. Uh, Muslim are coming to us and happy with our service. That's the issue of access to care. And so you might be providing cultural um, competent care or culturally appropriate care, but, the, but it doesn't answer the question is if it's efficacious and safe. Harold says so. We already talked about appeal to authority and flavor on medication. This is actually an interesting question is if you're integrating all these different pieces that have already been proven, like cognitive restructuring or, or what, whatever those pieces are, then what is Islamic psychology? Hmm. And it's important to distinguish yourself and establish exactly what is the technique that you're, you're um, arguing. I'm gonna skip this slide um, and just say that the evidence that, he, that Human showed uh, for spiritual oriented psychotherapy is not Islamic psychology, it's spiritually oriented therapy. And so you're extrapolating something that's not specific to your method. Uh, so I'll leave the closing remarks for later. How much time do I have, Farha? You have a couple of minutes more. <laughs> I'll see my time. Before, because you ceded your time before, but if but you're done. I'll cede my time again. I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll wait for Carrie to attack me once you open it up. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, 
Human, five minutes for your closing remarks, please. Because I can also see the chat room is uh, bulged uh, and I don't have much questions. So why not open it up for discussion? So why don't you have uh, five minutes for closing argument? I agree. Um, so, uh, you know, in conclusion, um, uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, fully on board with, uh, with being critical of Islamic psychology. Um, so this is, uh, my argument is not to say that um, we shouldn't be critical, or that, uh, despite the fact that I, 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 um, it, what, let me say this: RCTs are necessary. Um, however, I don't think they're sufficient, right? And I think that RCTs are very limiting. And I question the notion that in a, in psychology, that's the only epistem epistemological kind of. Um, demonstrable evidence that we need. Now, APA also backs that. So I challenge the notion where Hamada is saying that it's, uh, APA is saying that it is the only, it is the sta only standard. It is a gold standard once again, but process outcome studies, for example, are by the proponents of them challenged to generalize better to real life settings. And they are scientists that actually do critique the RCT and refuse to take an RCT approach because of their philosophy and psychology, right? And, and so what I'm saying is, let us look at the big picture is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not saying that RCTs are not necessary. I'm saying we need to have them so that we can silence the critics at the very least, right? Um, but, and I also agree with the do no harm principle because of the fact that we're, we're talking, psychology is not only a science here. And Islamic psychology is not only a science, it's also a faith tradition. It's the spirituality piece. And Hamada is right. People will use Quran and Sunnah in the wrong place. And that's why competencies and trainings need to be established for both because I am critical of that you know, psychologist who's never gone through a formal seminary uh, course even, and then come to the table and speak in the name of God, right? to say that this is what psychology, this is what Islam has to say about, to you about your tradition in the same way that I would be critical of clergymen coming and say, I speak in the name of God to extrapolate something that God is not saying about that person's case specific phenomenon, um, something he knows nothing about because of his lack of training and, and, and anxiety and, and, and religious or, 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 or rather mental health or mental health standards. So I, I agree, we got to raise the bar. And I accept the challenge that Hamada is giving me. And, and, and I hope that five years later, he will be critiquing me on the RCT that we've established and whether it does have generalizability or whether it's methodologically valid uh, or reliable or not. Thank you. So Hamad, Hamado, five minutes, please. No problem. You have to take on the whole uh, chat room after that. <laughs> no problem. Hamada, you kind of put yourself in a corner, you know, like you're taking on Islamic psychology, you're arousing a lot of... <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what I argued. I, I, so, so Humad has conceded that RCTs are, is the gold standard. It is one of many methods and this is an end of the RCT. I acknowledge that. I also acknowledge that RCT is a very specific, is for a specific group, is idealized, is not generalizable. But we have other methods. We have dissemination, I'm sorry, implementation research, where or we, has, we have phase four I, RCTs. In other words, how does this intervention that's been proven in an idealized condition, set of conditions, how does this generalize to the real world, to the national setting? So we, we were, were using these term, this terminology um, imprecisely because the, these different methods all inform how can we make people better. In terms of the gold standard to show that something's efficacious and safe, and safe is the RCT, and to see that it's generalizable, that's implementation science. Okay, so, so I think it's important that we use, you know, that we understand that, you know, with uh, an RCT, we exclude this group, this group, we only include this group. They're in a very kind of artificial um, environment, and then in real life, people don't actually use the, the exact manual. Well, that's what we implementation science is for. That how, how does this intervention actually play out in real life, real world science? So there are methods for that. But before getting to that place, before doing the real world science, implementation science, 
you need to have the RCTs that establish empirically that this intervention works more than the comparison group. I will end with a quote but by an esteemed colleague that said, Islamic psychology, I'm asking you to vote for myself. Okay, Islamic psychology <laughs> is, uh, requires further investigation, is clearly an impoverished domain. And that um, quote was from nobody except Human and his research group. So we, we still have a lot of work to do. Okay, I think uh, Human, we can see defeats. You want to just concede? You don't have to, you can save them the vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you, uh, both of you. So, we are not questioning the importance of Islamic psychology. And uh, I, I guess we both are agreeing that more needs, uh, work needs to be done to standardize it and to make sure that there is no misuse or that there is more benefits versus um, um, having any other side. I, I so, so, let me, so let's, uh, let's address some of the chat questions. So I think there's some real good questions here. One question yes. is from Hamad. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> okay, oh, no. he, he's so ready to take over, Gary. So uh, yeah. Amada, didn't you read the manual? Are we open for questions? Before we started? <laughs> before we open for questions, just a reminder, please make sure you uh, uh, do the voting through the polls to continue working on that. And now, uh, I guess, Kerry, everybody wants to hear from you. So <laughs> we are going to first start with you. Mute you. Uh, Shuchi, can we unmute Kerry? I'm trying to find her. Yeah, she should be unmuted now. Okay. Oh my God. I said everything. Human said everything. Honestly, <laughs> I would not say like I'm like bowing to Human right now. I'm like I just texted Human. I said, Human, I want to see you do this presentation again, and I want you to write a paper on it. Mashallah, great job. <laughs> I have nothing to add. Is there anyone <laughs> who's gonna second Hamada? Carrie was not planted, by the way. This was not like <laughs> no. timing so that she could start, you know. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> it's a biased group. You, you <laughs> so um, I, I would throw it out there. Anyone who seconds Hamada's uh, uh, point of view? MD. Uh, anyone, anyone who would Suchi, want to second him? <laughs> She's raising her hand. You're ignoring Stucci. <laughs> oh, okay, Suchi, come on in. Sure. Go ahead, Suchi. Well, um, I think I'm with Hamada on it. The fact that you, you can't just keep using non-evidence-based techniques and uh, thinking that it's okay to do that. I mean, go back to any other sciences. Uh, what we did in surgery back in the day, we don't do the same things now. And if we kept doing things the same way, we'd be losing a lot of people. Because if we were so good with our outcomes, why is it that the people getting better outcomes in psychiatry are pretty much the worst? I mean, it's okay to admit, to say that, yeah, we don't know the neurobiochemistry and we don't know how psychotherapy works, but that doesn't mean it's okay to keep doing it. Okay. And by, and by the way, it works both ways. I mean, there's plenty of therapies that work much better than medicine. And that's why we do therapy instead of medicine. And, the, and medicine, and we know that medicine can be very unsafe and harmful. And that's why, you know, we make these choices. And that's why we study it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring in Fahad Khan. He has, he's been making a few points too. So I'll, I'll try and get one on each side. So, so Fahad might go either way. Uh, <laughs> okay, Fahad. Then it's up to you. <laughs> I'm a clinical guy in, in the Khalil Center. Uh, but, you know, I actually... Uh, I'm gonna make a very small point about when it comes to human beings, I don't think anyone can be definitive about anything here. We can have evidence one way or the other, but I was writing a comment which, I'll, which was alluding to the fact that there is an influence of big pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies in determining which way research goes. You know, when you try to publish something, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of criticism that comes in and there's reasons why, not just Islamically integrated therapy. I mean, Human knows that recently, I mean, I even look into like other forms of treatment 
Um, you can't even get a, a study in ketamine and MDMA published uh, that, ha that has been proven effective in, on depression. Why? Because there's a huge lobby behind it. So I think we also are forgetting that aspect that exists in, our, in, in the ecosystem right now. Thank you. I would like to request Saud Inam to come in. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to bring someone from your point of view, Amada. No, it's not from my point of view, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Saud. He's, he's going to take, take a shot at me. That's what I have to say. Can we unmute Saud? Salagum, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah. So, my apologies, I'm probably the... the most unqualified to kind of comment. Um, but I, I guess in my mind, um, I, I, don't, I don't particularly have a side. Like I don't see this as a us versus them type thing, but um, I just had a, uh, mine were more questions in regards to the, the TIIP model, like of therapy, like um, is Khalil Center working towards kind of, you know, building more research and more data around that? To kind of placate Dr. Hamada, and, you know the you know the naysayers, like because um, obviously there is value in you know in uh, you know Islamic psych psychotherapy and like, um, but I guess I don't again I'm not taking sides. It's more questions in, in regards to the model, and then also is TIIP more geared towards quote unquote practicing Muslims, and if so, is that kind of very kind of a niche thing that kind of works for? Right. only practicing Muslims, so. Yeah. Yeah, it is a very, 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 very good question. I mean, the short answer is yes. I mean, Hamada knows this uh, very well. We're in constant, we have a conversation and we have monthly lab meetings in which we're discussing bringing, uh, you know, um, the, what we're doing to evidence base. Now, again, I told you that uh, I'm not um, disputing uh, RCTs uh, as an important uh, measure and gold standard of evidence base. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that it's too narrow and I don't think, and that the field is very diverse. And I think if we constrict ourselves narrowly to RCTs, then we have to throw out most of psychology. And uh, those who um, produce RCTs, I would say you'd, al you'd also have to question their, their practices as well, because I know our, you know, quote unquote people who um, you know, sort of champion RCTs definitely as a gold standard, they don't necessarily practice that way in the manualized way that we're talking about. There's a lot of discussion around too much controls being given to the uh, you know, researcher um, at the expense of the practitioner. Uh, the, other the other questions like, again, construct validity, what are we really working on? Um, you know, and, and Hamada raised the question of, uh, you know, what is Islamic psychology? Uh, you know, if we're saying, you know, if he's saying, okay, I'll, en I'll entertain you here and say that fine, you're using empirically evidence-based, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, proven interventions as sort of a cocktail or stew of psychotherapies, and then you're calling it Islamic psychology. So what really makes Islamic psychology unique? Um, I would pose the same question. What would make CBT unique from EFT, uh, right? Uh, both are empirically based, and it poses a lot of construct validity questions in psychology that uh, we just can't ignore. And, and there are individuals that are really posing these critical questions, right? And, uh, and, and so, for example, my own mentor in EFT, for example, refuses to use the word psychoeducation or cognition at all, even if it looks exactly like cognitive uh, uh, ideas or constructs, right? And she'll say, no, this is how we do it, and this is our explanatory mechanism of change. Um, so I think we, uh, we, the, that's, that's important to consider. The last thing I'll say is also the interpretation of the mechanism of changes of what, what's happening, which is what's, what makes, us, um, what makes uh, psychology both a philosophy and a science at the same time. So CBT says, look, I use these interventions. It works. Agreed. Okay. And there's outcome to prove it. But the question is, why does it work? And we can't necessarily prove that per se, right? Because uh, we can say, oh, you know, am I, because we can't measure it. You can't open yeah, up yeah. the mind and exactly. say, oh, I worked yeah. with this portion. And yes, we, yeah. in cognitive neuroscience, we're trying to get there and we're so, talking neurocircuitry, but we have to be, you know, we have to have some humility and recognizes, recognizing that our psychology is 
not, uh, is, is, uh, cannot be uh, uh, governed on the same analogy of the medical model. Okay, so, uh, but uh, would you uh, answer the question, the limitation, that yeah. how do you broaden the scope? Because already you are saying it is more adapt, like uh, need, like uh, more geared towards uh, practicing Muslim. Right, 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 that was a good question. Yeah, so you have to, how do you focus on that? That's something that the evidence needs to demonstrate. I mean, uh, again, I'll, I'll just, just take some humility here to say, yes, uh, Hamad is right. I don't have evidence for that. What I do have evidence for anecdotally and in our, um, uh, you know, and in our uh, non-RCT studies that are process outcome in-house with large ends, but no, con but no control groups at the very least, we could say we're not doing harm. And so when we see that we're having a range of individuals checking off scores that are saying there's a range of individuals as to how observant they are. But I am saying this, that Islamic psychology certainly, Islamic psychology specifically is geared for Muslim populations, right? And it's geared for religiosity. We open the question, how do you define religiosity? That's a whole problem mm. itself. But, mm -hmm. but those who self-identify as Muslims and that report that Islam is an important part of their identity and their meaning-making uh, worldview and structure and opt for and desire for Islam to be an instrumental part of their psychotherapy. So that's the population we're interested in. And, okay. and, 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 and we'll see through time as to how we do uh, with that. I can say, you know, Hamad has said in our meeting before, that you know, what you can say is this pilot study. You see what I'm saying? Fine, fair enough, call it whatever you will. You know, a rose by any other name, you know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> Human, I have another question. Uh, sorry if I, if I, if I may. Um, is there, are there other faith communities are, that are doing something similar to TIAP that, that do have empirical dev evidence that like, could be kind of said, hey, it works in the Christian community or Jewish community or Hindu, whatever community similar to what we're trying to do, like that can be proven that, hey, it, yeah, it, the role of faith can have a positive impact, you know. Right, right. Like study. I said, the data, is, uh, the data is proven on taking CBT, adapting it for particular religious populations. Mm -hmm. So there's proof for that with Muslims, right? The question mm -hmm. is a non-CBT orientation. Does that exist? A purely spiritually oriented psychotherapy. Um, mm -hmm. Is there evidence for a generalist one? Yes, there is. And does that generalist one work with Muslims, yes, but it's uh, data is limited as I demonstrated, right, mm -hmm. as, I, as I showed. Now, Scott Richards, who was on the keynote yesterday, and this is part of my agenda as to why I actually called him on, because <laughs> he's one of those folks that is very process outcome, very kind of advanced spiritually integrated psychotherapies. Um, he's working on this huge data set, right? But I, I will admit with Hamada that even in our, even our own study, that there's significant limitations in that, uh, in that approach. So I, I absolutely concede to the fact that we have to do better in standardizing and developing signature interventions. We don't have all of this stuff out of the guns. Everybody is going to have a certain type of style. The way that I practice, yes, may be very different the way that Fahad practices. In fact, not maybe, is different than the way that Fahad practices, right? But what's the common denominator that we're saying works? We have to continue to develop that. Right now, we have a sort of an overarching uh, explanatory framework. We have, a, we have a theoretical orientation. What we need to do, which is what I want to do, is to ta take this to signature interventions. Now, we have some. But we need to build it out. We have to specify, what do we mean? Take the, for example, muraqaba. What does it mean when we are talking about muraqaba? Like in our study, it's a limitation. People checked off muraqaba. Our clinicians did, that they used it. But I can, but we didn't have a sort of a, a definition of it, right? I mean, we have a general global definition, but what was happening in the room? I think this is what Hamada is asking about, right? What's happening in the room? What are you doing? I'll be the first to admit that we need to explore that. I think and, we need to bring Hamada back too. Hamada, you, you want to add anything? No, I was just on the tape that 65% of the audience did not vote. If you're going to vote for me, go ahead and vote. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, you feel bad. Uh, like, so I, I think, okay. <laughs> Is, uh, has anyone raised hands or wants to make a point and would raise hand? And uh, 
Yeah. So I mean, so you, I mean, you, so far to answer your question, I mean, I, I stand by my position that we have to have a gold standard for our interventions. We can't just say, oh, you know, it's great. Because you can say that with anything. I can give you, you know, my, my juice here and say, you take this, drink this juice, you're going to feel better. What and you might feel better. What if the Prophet ﷺ said it would feel better? That's the, that's but, the, but, but you know what? I say Prophet ﷺ says this, and you say that he says that, and what does it actually mean in the real life? And so you have to be, and actually, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, it's very right. dangerous. And I, and I right. think it's a whole separate ethical issue about right. using religious authority to say, Allah says this, the Prophet says this, you should do that, because mm. that is a slippery slope. And that's a different issue, and that's, aside from the RCT stuff, but, that, but, but it's, not, it's not so clean. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that, that um, I mean, that is, it's, 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 a, it's very dangerous. And so, okay. um, you know, so, you know, so I'm, that, the ethics aside, and that, and that slippery slope aside, you want, if you want to be taken seriously as a intervention, as a science, you have to show it. Otherwise, you're not going to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, mindfulness, by the way, you, 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 you invoked mindfulness. There's right. a lot of RCTs. I agree. I a lot of RCTs. All I was saying is that... Uh, I would add that mindfulness did not get accepted till we separated it from the religion. So it's taken as, the, it's yeah. not religion-based. Yeah. That's interesting. That's, that's one thing, too. Right. So, it's, it's become secularized, uh, number one. And number two, right. uh, the, our, the mindfulness it did, it, it didn't start that way, first of all. Right? That's, that's, that's also what I'm saying about Islamic psychologies, is that, you know, uh, is an acknowledgement of where we need to get to. Uh, the other piece is, again, I would, say, yeah, I would, again, stand by my position to say that psychology is not only a science. I do accept it as a science uh, for a portion of it. But I, uh, but I do not view it through that lens only and solely. So I do view, and, and to your question, that opens up the non-science discussion and ethics around invoking Allah and his Rasul to say that something is proven to work. That is a whole conversation itself. And I will agree with you that we want to be very careful there because we absolutely could be doing way more harm, right? Uh, 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 than we think we're doing with patients when we're invoking Allah and his Rasul. That's a huge space and authority. And that's why <laughs> I'm also very critical to say our standard has to be high because we cannot be putting out Islamic psychologists everywhere, right? right? That, 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 that loosely use these terms and, and, and ideas without having proper vetting. And again, I'm conceding to the fact that there needs to be further development and there needs to be further discussion and there needs to be further competencies uh, 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 developed, but we're getting there. And I think you're using the yardstick that's like a few years ahead of us, right? To jar judge something that's in its stage, stage of infancy. If you had this conversation with mindfulness when the idea- but, uh, the same just leave Because Hamada, Hamada doesn't have 50 students from Turkey participate. <laughs> <laughs> so I will add to that, and that exactly is the debate point, that are we at that point, are we ready to accept it as a clinical practice, right? That was the beginning point. Yeah, of my, my answer to that was yes and no, basically. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, I have some answers to it, um, but I admit uh, that there's a long way to go. Long way but, to go, but and but certainly it's, it's make it more. Not only should it be practiced, it's absolutely necessary, in my opinion, that it be practiced. Um, now, you know, obviously it's... What or is should it? we use the word it's evolved? A conversation on its own, right? What, what are the, right. What the, you know... Practice and continue to evolve. How's that? How do we get to that point, right? Practice and continue to evolve. Excellent. Yeah, Dr. Basi, there's a question yes. by Hala in the group chat. Could you please read that to both of them? Uh, I'll have to wear my glasses. Why don't you go ahead and read to them? Okay, sure. Uh, so the question is, um, I would love to hear both their thoughts on the institutional barriers to studying Islamic psychology in contemporary Western academia in the first place. Context of Islamophobia, lack of funding for scientific research, let alone psycho, spiritual research, etc. Scientists often think science happens in a vacuum outside of social, political, and economic context, but that is That's clearly true. not the case. So could so, you guys, uh, both sides? 
Yeah. That's a really good question. Hamada, if we don't have, if we're going to do an RCT and you're going to be a co-investigator on it, uh, where are we going to get the money to do it, all right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Michigan, Michigan State. <laughs> so, again, in all seriousness, that's an excellent question. And it points to what Fahad was also bringing up. There are psychosocial, political, cultural barriers to even doing the science. And so, and that, that's a problem. And it's, it's, that's why, I mean, it's one of the reasons why we have this conference. It's one of the re re reasons why we are coming to the journal. Because um, we know that there's, there, you know, there's a bias, a, a conscious and unconscious bias against spirituality and religion. Um, and that's why we have to kind of have the bar high so we can show that, you know, the, the, our interventions are effective and so forth and so on. To the financial thing, that's a, that's a major problem. Because you know we're doing this on our nights and weekends, right? I mean, this conference, most of almost ninety percent of people involved, and the faces you see on the screen are doing this. You know, they're, we're all working full time, and or students full time, and we're doing this on our nights and weekends. And because there's not support for this, and quite frankly, there's not going to be support for this. You know, I, and and when and one of the conf, one of the difficulties I have when I, when I mentor people who are excited to do this type of work, is that you know, as a mentor. How are you going to sustain your career? Now, you know, Homan figured it out in, in terms of providing services that's, you know, that he's providing direct services um, that, that support, you know, his staff. Um, and then he can do research kind of on the side. Um, but, you know, where are you going to get funding for clinical trials? By the way, the average cost of a clinical trial is about a million dollars, you know, average cost. Um, and to show efficacy in a randomized controlled trial, I mean, it's, it's very costly. And so that, that is a very serious barrier that we have to, and then the question is, oh, are you going to um, go to Muslim majority countries? Well, then that's fraught with um, challenges as well. Uh, there's political challenges, there's social challenges. I opened up this conference sharing how um, I had, you know, my former medical graduates were all, their visas were expired, they would not renew it. It's because the policy level there was because the government said, we're not going to, we're going to monitor foreign funding. So there was a couple of controversies with funding from China, funding from other countries to major institutions. And they said, you know, we want to monitor this. And so we're cutting off any um, visas for scientists here. So there's a whole host of um, barriers and problems, social economic that we, we have to acknowledge and face and think about. Hmm. Okay, I would uh, thank you both. Um, great uh, discussion. Uh, why don't uh, I turn to Hamad? Hamad, you can announce the poll result and then. What's the, what, is there an award or something? Is there one? <laughs> the award. <laughs> All right. So okay. the, I will announce that in a minute. Uh, Once I want to get the million dollar RCT grant. The, the, the award is the winner takes out the loser to dinner. <laughs> so, so the, so the, big, one. So the okay. big question was who won the debate so first of all thank you guys both for this uh, debate i think it was very educational for all of us um and it's an important it's an important question um but so we had uh the runner-up second place was hamada um <laughs> so we had a total of 33 people uh vote and uh, or 34 people vote and so 30 of them went to human so 91 percent <laughs> and uh, four of them went to Hamada. So, Hamada, what's the, what's, the validity of, what's the validity of this? How do we explain? Well, it's a great question. <laughs> we can find out who, who are the people, what are the demographics of people voted for you? I have a hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say the results were tempered. The election <laughs> results were tempered. <laughs> Conflict of interest there. The question is, what happened to the people that didn't vote? Yeah, but like, I, I mean, there's, the there's, there's been a total of like 80 lost. participants. So a majority of people did not participate. The majority of people uh, thought we both lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. should, should we yes, give one, a, one, one minute. Should we give a recount? <laughs> Let's recount in one minute. How's that? <laughs> no, uh, I think uh, uh, we all agree to disagree and disagree to agree. So hopefully, we want to support this uh, Islamic psychology movement and uh, inshallah we will see progress in it and uh, we will see more broader application of the, uh, these uh, policies and um, uh, we will continue to continue this dialogue as well. 
Um, so uh, with that, any ending comments, Hamada? <laughs> I'll give you first a chance. <laughs> it, was, it was rigged. Hama <laughs> you know, Hamada is like that paternal uh, love that he <laughs> wanted to lose to you, Oman. <laughs> Hamada is setting up my confidence, right? He's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. No, but in, 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 in short, I think there's, um, there's a lot more, I would, I don't know if Hamada feels this way, but there's a lot more convergence. There is divergence, I think. There, we're, we're, we're saying uh, a lot of the same uh, things. It's just we're saying it in different ways. And I think if we had the time to really flush out all of this, I think we find that, you know, Hamada is just as much, uh, you know, Hamada's critique, he, he wants us to get better. And he's told me that a couple of times after he's injured me a couple of times, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so my final uh, word on this uh, debate is please, those 50 persons that did not vote, please don't do that. In <laughs> <laughs> so that would be my final word to you all. Thank you all. Thank you for a great discussion. Thank you for the participation. And please, those 50 person, please go vote. Thank you. <laughs> right. Welcome, everyone. Sound like um.